Catalan Parliament Speaker is under pressure. He needs to lead the Chamber's response to the suspension of MPs ordered by a Spanish court. Some are telling him to abide while others to disobey. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. Catalan president also commented on how to react to the Supreme Court's decision. This while in Scotland where he said he is confident the exiled former Catalan minister there, Clara Punsati, won't be extradited. He visited her in Edinburgh just some hours before meeting the Scottish First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. This and more in today's Catalan News show. Carlos Puigdemont and six more relevant MPs have been told to give up their seats. While unionist parties have no doubts that a judicial ruling needs to be complied with, how pro-independence parties will react is yet to be seen. All eyes are now on the chamber's top authority. This man, Roger Touraine, is now under pressure. The Catalan parliament president will soon have to decide how to react to the latest Spanish judicial ruling. Yesterday, the Supreme Court ordered six jailed or exiled MPs to be suspended from public office. This is something allowed under Spanish law for individuals prosecuted for terrorism or rebellion and facing a detention order. The question now is, should the Parliament Bureau abide by this order? The Chamber's regulations state that the majority of lawmakers need to agree in order to suspend an MP. But the main unionist party, Ciutadans, thinks this doesn't work with a court ruling. Que las resoluciones judiciales no es votan. No es votan al Parlament si ens agraden o no. I la suspensió vol dir que no es pot cobrar, no es pot votar ni es pot delegar el vot. I això és el que s'ha de complir. And they are not alone, as the socialists strongly believe the same. Yet at the other end of the political spectrum, the pro-independence far-left coup party is calling on Torrent to take a completely different approach. És una qüestió de dignitat, de no acceptar ser un Parlament colonitzat i subaltern. Es un acte de dignitat bàsic de supervivència nacional desobeir aquesta eh, interlocutòria del jutge Llarena. As for the Catalan ombudsman, he thinks this suspension isn't applicable. He also accused the judge of overstepping his powers. Meanwhile, Catalan president Kim Torra also commented on the controversy. I'm not uh, asking any of the, the members of the parliament affected by, by these sentences to resign. Not at all. Torra made these remarks from Scotland, where he went to meet Clara Ponsetti, the exiled official who was facing an extradition request. The president thanked the Scottish people for their generosity and support towards Ponsetti. He also expressed confidence that the former minister will not be extradited. His visit also had another aim, meeting the Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon. It's the first time the heads of both governments have met in a decade. From Scotland, we now travel to Paris, as the mayor of Barcelona is in the French capital, her aim to fight housing speculation. And today, she got the mayor of Paris's support. Ada Colau and Anne Hidalgo joined forces to ask governments for more municipal powers to deal with the issue. They denounced a dramatic rise in rents over the past few years. Also, Hidalgo supported Colau's initiative for a joint declaration of cities on housing, as the mayor of London did so last week. The Catalan capital's leader also said there is much to learn from Paris. Porque hay algunas cuestiones que las podemos hacer a nivel municipal y las estamos haciendo, como esta regulación del 30% en las nuevas promociones de vivienda, que nos hemos inspirado en la experiencia de París y en la experiencia de Londres. Housing is just one of the hot topics in Catalonia and historical memory is another one. Historical plaques such as this one with the yoke and the arrows, a symbol of the Franco regime, can still be seen over the country. A lot of such symbols have been withdrawn, but many are still around, four decades after the Spanish dictator's death. The Catalan Justice Ministry is to put forward a historical memory law which intends to make the removal of such symbols obligatory. Exhuming the 500 mass graves from the Spanish Civil War still in the country is another priority of the Catalan government. Today we learned some worrying figures about road safety in Catalonia. Now summer is underway, the government has advised people to drive carefully, but this advice is best stuck to all year round. It started out as a normal day on the road, but resulted in the tragic loss of life of two men as their car collided with a truck. This was only in June. In the first six months of the year, 92 people have died in road accidents in Catalonia. 
50 of the victims lost their lives between January and March. The rate of accidents has skyrocketed to nearly 50% more than 2017. The main causes, according to the Catalan police, speeding, alcohol, and drugs. All these factors have seen a rise as being the principal reason behind a crash in relation to last year, alongside distractions. One out of four accidents have been caused by people not concentrating on the road. And now summer is underway, Catalan roads tend to be more dangerous. Al període d'estiu, que estem al mes de juliol, mitjans de juliol, juliol, agost, setembre, són mesos tradicionalment complicats en termes d'accidentalitat. As people take to the roads for the holidays, however, accidents can be avoided with a bit of diligence. Today, at the presentation of these shocking traffic figures, the Catalan government sent out a message to all the drivers out there. Doncs el que volem també és donar aquest missatge de no baixar la guàrdia en moments en què hi ha situacions en què doncs, les dades no són gens, gens favorables. So if you have plans to go on a road trip this summer, or even if you're just driving on your routine route, be careful. Stick to the speed limit, don't use your phone, and never drive under the influence. Moving on to culture now, Catalonia is known for its festivals, which come in a wide variety. Details on three more were announced today. Let's take a look at what they were like last year and what we can expect. Summer is in full swing in Catalonia, bringing festivals of all kinds, with still much to look forward to as announcements today showed and thus something for everyone. Next Thursday we'll see the two-day renaissance festival in the southern town of Tortosa, as last year this is a chance to step into the past, to a time adorned with flags and banners from the 16th century. This 23rd edition, one of the most complete historical reenactments in all of Catalonia, is sure to delight both young and old, with theatre, workshops, parades, commerce and more. In total, about a hundred events and scores of free shows will take place on its newly medieval cobbled streets. And for those wanting to get a good night of dancing in, thus Unite with Tomorrowland, held just outside Barcelona on the last Saturday of July, and in the same family as the legendary event in Belgium, it will feature DJs like Steve Aoki and Armin van Buren. Then, to close off the summer at the end of August, comes the acoustic festival held in the northern town of Figueres. Last year it featured now solo musicians Rosalia and Refri reimagining flamenco. This year brings Love of Lesbian and Als Catarras from the last day of August to the 1st of September. And that's all for us today. And with the weather so hot, we've got a way for you to cool down. Muyat, a charity event dedicated to the fight against multiple sclerosis, means get wet in Catalan. A double entendre that also means get involved. It took place in hundreds of pools in its 25th edition. Let's take a look at how it went and see you tomorrow.